Millennia has passed since the Dark Elves, or Druki in their elven tongue, violently tore away from the High Elves. Banished from Ulthuan, the spiteful and perverted Dark Elves plot the demise of their former brethren from their home continent of Nagaroth. The Dark Elves are ruthless murderers that will slaughter anyone that gets in their way. We'll take a look at the basics of the Dark Elves campaign and how they play out on the battlefield. So there are two paths the Dark Elves can take to victory. Either go after the Vortex, completing all the rituals and winning the final battle, or dominate the lands by controlling 50 provinces and wiping out certain factions. If you wish to take control of the Great Vortex, you'll have to complete a series of rituals which will ultimately lead you to a final battle. There will be forces that will try to stop you along the way, and other factions will be trying to do the same thing, so you may have to intervene to stop them taking control of the Vortex. If you'd rather just destroy anything and everything in your path, then a domination victory may be for you. There are plenty of suitable settlements for the Dark Elves to inhabit, but some are in uninhabitable climates. You can still control these, but the settlement will take some serious penalties. If you want to begin rituals to get after the Vortex, you're going to need Scrolls of Hakati. This is the Dark Elves ritual currency that can be gathered through buildings, treasure hunting, missions and more. Once you've gathered up enough scrolls, you'll be able to begin your first ritual. You'll repeat this process until the final ritual has been completed. There's also certain settlements throughout the world which are ritual resource sites, indicated by the symbol next to the settlement name. This will give you access to a building chain that can produce scrolls of Hakati, so look to control these to reach your ritual faster. Other factions will be trying to do the same thing as you and may begin rituals before you. If this displeases you and you'd like to remind everyone else that you are the king, you can send an intervention army. You'll spend money to send an AI controlled army to the enemy regions to attempt to take one of their settlements and stop the ritual. The more money you spend, the bigger and tougher the army will be. If you should succeed, the enemy's ritual will be delayed. So keep an eye on your opponents, lest they beat you to the vortex. The Dark Elves also have access to their own powerful abilities in the form of rites. These will cost you slaves to perform, only last a certain amount of turns and have a cooldown as well. Use them sparingly so they're there when you need them. The most powerful rite for the Dark Elves is a sacrifice to Mathlan, which will allow them to recruit their terrifying Black Arcs. A floating fortress in the ocean, fantastic for supporting your rampaging armies. The Dark Elf technologies are broken off into smaller research trees, which will strengthen part of your army or economy like the Driven by Vengeance tree here that will strengthen some of my low to mid tier units. If I want to increase the efficiency of my economy, I could start with the Founded on Tyranny tree. Various traits here will help boost my expansion throughout the world. Simply check out all the tooltips to see what each research does, and start with the ones you feel would be most useful to your playstyle. A unique aspect of the Dark Elves game is their slaves, which will provide you a positive and a negative. They will create you income at the expense of your public order. On the slaves overview screen, you'll see all the provinces where you have slaves, how many you're allowed and how many you have, as well as a region's current income and public order. So the more slaves a region gets, the greater the income from slaves will be. But of course, this will affect your public order as you'll have a lot of unhappy slaves around. You can see this in the effects of slaves section. So then it just becomes a case of controlling the situation. So for an example, you can see the Iron Mountains public order isn't doing so well, so I should probably try to do something about it. Now it's only being slightly affected by the slaves at the moment, but I don't want it to get any worse. I can use the no more slaves, request additional slaves, and receive slaves buttons to control my slave population in each region. So we'll go for no more slaves in the Iron Mountains. Nagarond isn't doing too badly in the public order, a few buildings should sort that out, so I'm going to request additional slaves for there to increase my income. I'll keep Iron Frost Glacier the same, as I have an army nearby that should sort that public order out soon enough. So slaves are fantastic for getting you some extra income, but if left uncontrolled, may rebel and cause you some problems. Slaves are typically acquired from defeating other armies, whether that be in a settlement or out in the open fields. You may get various options and receive differing amounts of slaves. Be sure to manage your slave population carefully to get the best out of them. Black Arcs, Dark Elf warships that terrorize the ocean of the New World. They serve the Dark Elves in many different ways. They can recruit units into their own army used to attack other vessels at sea or to lend its units to your other armies. They come with their own building chains, essentially turning it into a floating settlement, which can serve various purposes. One of their strongest features though is their bombardments, magical explosions that can be landed anywhere during a battle to support your armies on land. A useful advantage to have in any battle. For an army to be supported by the bombardments, they'll have to be in the radius of this yellow circle, which is pretty big, allowing support of your armies deep inland but this isn't all it does for your forces within range. 
As the Dark Elves have no kind of encamped stance to replenish their troops when outside of their own territory, they may struggle when trying to invade other lands. This is where the Black Ark comes in. It has its own stance called Dread Expansion. This will allow replenishment for any armies within its radius, cementing the Black Ark's true position as a supporting vessel. On top of all that though, you'll also be able to recruit new units into your army directly from the Black Ark and any buildings it may have there. So if you're looking to invade and expand, you'll want to bring a Black Ark along to support your cause. Loyalty is also an important trait of your lords that you need to manage. If a leader of your army is just sat around doing nothing, they may begin to doubt the leadership of your legendary lord. You can keep them happy in various ways, such as winning battles, recruiting units, or applying equipment to them. If a lord's loyalty reaches zero, they'll rebel and take the army for themselves and try to overthrow you. So be sure to keep your lords loyal. To build a strong Dark Elf army, you will need the necessary buildings. Conscription halls are a good place to start as they'll offer you the basic spearmen and ranged unit options. This will ultimately lead to some of your best infantry, your Black Ark Corsairs, and your repeater bolt thrower artillery. If you'd like something with a bit more mobility, then the Plateau of Dark Steeds can offer you shock and missile cavalry. If you're looking for something more terrifying, you'll want to start with the Harpies Roost, which will only give you access to the Harpies at first, but will ultimately lead to your War Hydra and Black Dragon. Two very strong units for the Dark Elf roster. When it comes down to it on the battlefield, the Dark Elves need to play a very aggressive hand, and are not particularly lacking in any area of their army. However, they do rely on their aggressiveness and racking up a good kill count. This is all because of their murderous prowess ability, which when activated will spread and buff most of your army, making them even more effective killers. So the more damage and death you can deal to your enemy, the sooner your army will enter this frenzied state, which will be indicated by the bar at the top of the screen. It also gets filled by the deaths of your own troops, so it really pays to be aggressive as the Dark Elves. They have plenty of dangerous infantry for some strong front lines. Anti-infantry Black Ark Corsairs are a great offensive choice, while the inexpensive yet sturdy Dreadspears can offer you a good holding front line. You then have some nasty flanking units in Witch Elves and Shades, both very quick on their feet, great for sneaky ambushes. Dealing with large foes is no problem for the Dark Elves as well, Blackguard of Nagaron do not mess around when it comes to slaying monsters. You could also support your spear units with some armor-piercing missiles. And missiles is another area the Dark Elves have some strong options. Most of their missile units are armor-piercing, which of course further adds to their murdering capabilities. They don't have as much range as some of the other factions, but they can definitely do damage from a distance in many situations. As for cavalry, you'll have both lighter and heavier choices, both of which can rack up some easy kills for your murderous prowess by going after missile units or any fleeing enemies. So plenty of mobile killing power on the roster. And what kind of Dark Elf would you be if you didn't bring some kind of terrifying monster? When not incinerating foes with their breath attacks, the War Hydra and Black Dragon can absolutely wreak havoc all across the battlefield. A problem the Dark Elves can face is armies that play very defensively and don't allow you to get a lot of kills quickly. Or armies with a lot of monsters who typically have small unit sizes won't give you a lot of numbers to kill which will make it hard to fill your Murderous Prowess bar. Because Murderous Prowess doesn't work so well when the bar's mostly been filled by the death of your own troops, because you won't have a lot of troops left. So you may need to plan some attacks carefully. And with that we shall conclude this guide. If you'd like to find out more about the other factions in Warhammer 2, do check out the How to Play Outs videos. I hope you've enjoyed this and thank you for watching.